In the previous video, we talked about single variate, single step out prediction for time series uh, prediction. And in this video, we're gonna cover the multi step out prediction for time series. Okay, the example that we last time looked at it was a time series with a uh, simple time series with uh, one step out prediction. And the way we uh, tried to solve it was by shifting uh, the time series multiple times. And we did it twice, but you can do it multiple times. And uh, the reason was uh, then we could say, for example, this 17 and 18 are predictors for 19. And similarly, next uh, rules are going to be uh, predictors for the corresponding uh, xt. So we could, uh, in fact, say these shifts are x to the pre uh, previous signal, which is y. Now we can train uh, models to fit x to y. Now in the multi-step out, uh, we're going to have similar shifts in the input. Uh, but we, we are going to shift the outputs upward. Uh, why we want to do that, for example, if you shift only one, uh, this means, uh, for example, seven, uh, same 17 and 18 are going to be predictors for 19 and 20. So you are predicting two step, of, uh, two step in the future. And uh, these two are going to be your inputs and these two are going to be your outputs. Now you can uh, train similar models to map x to y or fit x and y and predict the y. Look at the code for univariate and multi-step LSTM. Um, we had this uh, univariate uh, time series and uh, now we add Num uh, number of steps as to we previously only had lags because we, went, we needed to predict just one point in the future but now we want to predict two points in the future so number of steps are two uh, we saw this for loop in the previous video uh, when you create those lags uh, which are uh, these columns uh, t minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. Similarly, we're going to add another for loop to uh, shift uh, on the other way around, shift to the top, uh, which uh, is negative shift. And that's going to create this column at the end for us. Now we know these are going to be predictors. These three columns are going to be predictors for these two columns. Um, a similar approach, we need to drop NAs and uh, slice the ones that we want for X and Y. I just showed uh, graphically, these are going to be Xs to predict these two Ys. And we need to convert them to NumPy arrays. And after doing those, you can print the shape uh, to just make sure uh, the shapes are correct. and uh, we need to convert uh, from samples and number of lags into samples, number of lags, and number of features. Uh, we already had this, and we're going to do uh, the reshape. Um, we still have number of feature 1 because it's a univariate problem. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the multi-feature or uh, multi-variate problems. And on the modeling side, uh, again, very similar approach, uh, sequential model. We're going to add two uh, layers. The only difference is the output layer now is uh, dense of number of steps because we want to predict two uh, outputs, one uh, T and another one T plus one. So this is the only difference from the previous video please watch the previous video and um, you can revise the code to get to this point and we're gonna similarly fit and uh, we're gonna use uh, these three points uh, three points uh, is because we used three uh, lags so we, we want to have three inputs to predict two outputs as you see 
we have these uh, number of steps as two so it's gonna predict two points in the future and uh, which makes sense 303 and 3 or 304 roughly in the next video, I'm going to add more features to the time series prediction, uh, which could be multiple inventory level that you want to predict uh, or use to predict another inventory level. Uh, and we're going to cover multi-step out and multi-feature, which is the uh, final version of time series uh, prediction that we're going to cover.